Hi everyone, this is Silas Ram, AsianCultureVulture.com. I'm with a fantastic Kabir Baby, who I'm sure you all know is a fantastic actor. Kabir, welcome. How are you feeling? I'm doing great. I mean, who can do badly in an ambience like this, Absolutely. a place like Goa, and an atmosphere like a film festival? So what brings you to Film Bazaar, particularly? Well, I've been part of IFI, um, the International Film Festival of India, for, for decades, really. I've, okay. I've, I've conducted some of the opening ceremonies, closing ceremonies. I've been part of the IFI family for, for long. So it's always special to come back here. And now, this year, is their 50th Golden Jubilee anniversary. So it's all the more special. The Film Bazaar is, is uh, one of the best organized uh, film bazaars in India because uh, they have put all the films on a computer or series of computers. So every person that wants to look at possible films goes there, sees any film they want, contact any director they want. And it's really beautifully organized. And they have all these networking sessions in the evening where people meet, talk, new projects appear, new ideas spring up, new New, new films are born. So it's a perfect setting for filmmakers and, uh, and uh, for the sales and, and, and uh, appreciation of film. And do you have a personal stake in coming here to Film Bazaar? Because obviously there was a recent biography of your mother published. Right. Fantastic woman, incredible story. It sounds like a great film. Well, my mother's story is very special because she was uh, an English feminist who married my father, joined the freedom struggle in India, was one of Gandhi's handpicked Satyagrahis, was part of the Kashmir re re refugee situation, then the Tibetans, uh, then was literally the Florence Nightingale of those refugee camps, uh, became a Tibetan Buddhist nun and rose to the highest levels that a woman can rise in the Tibetan orders. So there have been not just one, three books written on my mother, Frida Bedi, and um, I have the rights uh, to them. So um, I think uh, the idea is to make uh, a film, rather a series, a fiction series on it um, at the highest level with the best talent in the world. Uh, and that process is on. Um, we are collaborating with a very well-known British producer. And uh, hopefully we will get this on the road uh, sometime this year because it's a story that deserves to be told. It's not just a story of a woman. It's a story of um, a, a, a woman who transformed her own life and the lives of so many others. It is also the story of many major events of the 20th century, from the time she met my father in Oxford and married him, um, to going to Berlin at the time when Hitler was rising and they were leftist communists and they were had to flee coming to India and the freedom struggle, uh, the turbulence of Kashmir, the tragedy of Tibet, all those things are contained in this film. And I think it deserves to be told. And how developed is it? Do you have a script or is that still something that's, that's going to happen next year? Well, there are three books to base the script on. We are now uh, basically packaging it in terms of the talent that is going to be involved and the directors that will be brought on board. Uh, once that's in place and we get um, the interest of a major uh, platform, um, it'll certainly get the best scriptwriter possible. And I hope a great series will be made. And will we be seeing you in it? I doubt it. But I will certainly be one of the producers. And uh, it will be a great uh, achievement for me when this is done, not only because it'll be a great series, but because it'll be um, something very important uh, in my life to complete um, as it's a story of my own family and traditions that needs to be told. When you were growing up, did you have a sense of your mother's um, stature and her brilliance in many ways? You know, there's a saying in Hindi, ghar ki murgi dal barabar. Right. So your mother is your mother. You don't see her in those highly special terms. Right. Um, you see what she's doing and you go along and I was certainly part of a Buddhist experience and, and, and I became a Buddhist monk for a period of my life as well. And I felt that um, that that my mother had, was one of those people that had the amazing capacity of everyone she met, everyone had a sense that they had a special relationship with her and they did because that's how the importance she gave each person she met. And so while not being aware of the enormous significance of her life while growing up, 
as I grew up and came of age, I realized what an important story this was. I wanted to write it myself, but various things came in the way and then other writers came and I had all this material ready uh, to share with them and um, all of them, uh, three of them have written great books on it. The most recent being uh, Andrew Whitehead's book and uh, Naomi Levine's book. And then of course earlier there was Vicky McKenzie's book. So a lot of people have looked at her life from different points of view. Um, Andrew Whitehead being a BBC correspondent gave it a sort of worldwide dimension in terms of the political aspect and understanding the significance of her life. Um, Naomi and uh, Vicky looked at it more from the Buddhist point of view because she was a major figure in the Buddhist world and um, was one of, uh, was responsible for the spread of Buddhism in the Western world because every Lama that went to the West and established major monasteries came through the school that she established to teach Tibetan Lamas, the highest Lamas, English. And so, it's a good story. It's a good story. Yeah. It's a fantastic yeah. story. And what, what are you doing in terms of acting right now? Is, are there any big films on the horizon? I'm always uh, acting somewhere in the world. Uh, my career has been on three continents. Uh, I did some great theater in Canada, playing Shah Jahan for the a play commission from uh, John Murrell, one of the best playwrights yeah. in Canada. I'm doing an Italian film um, this December um, in a few weeks. Uh, there's always something or the other coming up somewhere in the world. My last big Bollywood film was Mohenjo-Daro with Hrithik Roshan. And I, I look forward to my continued work, but I'm also now producing things. I'm also planning to direct a play. Oh, wow. So my life is pretty full. Right. And in the middle of it all, I'm trying to write my own autobiography. <laughs> so it's a full Amazing. calendar. Uh, what, what excites you about directing theatre and not maybe not film? Well, <clears throat> I'd written a film script and then I adapted it as a play and I thought this is can really be first rate theatre. So um, then I looked around for directors and then I realised what is it these guys can do that I can't do? I've written the play, I've imagined it in my mind uh, I've done enough theatre, yeah. I'm going to direct this. Yeah. So, and you know, ironically, I came to Bombay to be a director, not to be an actor. Really? Wow. That's why I worked in advertising for many years, for Lentas, for Ogilvy and Matha. Uh, and I, and I um, uh, became an actor almost by default because one of my plays became a huge hit. And, one, and that led to Bollywood, that led to the Italians taking me for the, the Sandro Can series in Europe, that became a huge hit there. Um, and then acting just continued by default. But I think it'll be good if I get back to producing and directing. Fantastic. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you so Thank much you. for enjoy interviewing me and, and talking to me. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank, you. Thank you. And enjoy Goa. Great. Yeah, no.